Hello everyone, it is Caitlin, and today we're going to do an antique garment unboxing video. Alright, so I am very excited about today. I got all sorts of things in the mail. Um, I started getting them in last week, and I cannot tell you how much self-control it took to not open them. Um, so I've had like this this one right here um, for about a week now. So finally, the last piece arrived. We can do the unboxing video. So um, yes, I should have three bodices and a skirt. I believe all from the 1860s, if I remember correctly. But let's go ahead and get started. So um, I really have no idea which one's which. I just kind of put them all in a pile. So we're going to see. I have one evening bodice two day bodices, and a skirt again. Okay. okay, this is the evening bodice. Oh, that looks lovely. Look at this little bead. So we need not touch the pretty, no. Oh, that is just lovely. later 1860s. Definitely lined in polished cotton. It still has the polish on it. Machine stitched. Lovely hand and buttonholes. I love how it has a point in the front and then also the point in the back. I think that's precious. And there's the, oh, the beautiful sleeves. It's like, they're puffed. And they're very well puffed. And these little curly bits. It has a, so this trim is satin. So this fabric is um, the rib silk, and then the uh, trim work is all satin. And you only stitch it on one side. It's lined to polished cotton, and the raw edges are just there, which is fun. This little bead so it has piping, the arm side. And the waistline, but not the uh, neckline that's bound. Very long, lovely darts. Opens up the front. Get it open. Lots of boning. Way more boning than I'm used to. So this may be a, it's probably a later 1860s dresses, I would say. So bones in both darts. Random boning on the side, just randomly, because why not? Bones in the center back, or a bone in the center back, and then bones in the side seams. There's a little, uh, I call them fish, there's a little side dart taken over here, which is interesting, but only in the lining, not in the fashion fabric. So she probably, which is a smart thing to do, honestly, is to take the uh, lining, fit it to yourself, and then use the lining to cut the fashion fabric. So it's probably what she did because there's extra darts in the lining than there are in the fashion fabric. Some hooks and eyes on the very bottom for security. The edges were um, done just done on the selvage and they really weren't put back too far. So both ends are done on the selvage, so both the lining and the fashion fabric. And then she did a quick machine stitch down here, um, basically the width of the buttonhole, and she did a machine stitch about a quarter inch from the edge on this side and then put her buttons there. Which the buttons are beautiful. So I'd love to see the skirt to this. This is quite lovely. Yeah, I would definitely say a little bit later, 1860s. I'm going to move past the dog and get my um, measuring tape. very way she's very tiny. So measure from the hook and very tiny. 21 inches yeah in the waist so 21 inches in the waist and she has a larger bust.
about a 36 inch bust. Well, I'm going to get that later. So there's the back. So the back is atrium three piece back. So there's actually three pieces in it. It's not just um, tucked to tilt that way. But overall, very pretty piece. There's bodice number one. Let's fold it up for a second, put it out of the way. And let's look at number two. Every clothing haul I do, I have to get something that's black silk since most of my work, since most of, since most of my uh, collection is black silk. Okay, this one. Oh, look how precious! I bought this because I think the buttons are just absolutely adorable. Get this off. These pretty buttons, like jet or something. But the coat sleeves, untrimmed on the sleeves, piped, so on the sleeves, and it looks like the piping cord is brown, which is interesting. I've only ever seen white or cream. Piped at the um, wrist, waist, and arm thigh. It is bound on the neckline here. There we go. Okay, so her uh, three-piece back is, is tucked. So it's not a true three-piece back. You see the lines there. And she has no boning in the bodice. Yay, and it is hand done. A little strange that it's silk here and here. Oh, she did some major alterations. Major alterations, like that's where her seam used to be. That's over an inch on either side. So that's oh, probably about a two and a half inch difference in her waist that she had to take out. Just some wear, general wear. Um, some piecing. So she wore a hole right underneath her arm right here and she pieced it with the same fabric on the back it looks like. Um, yeah, that's just probably some conservation work. But that definitely has black fabric underneath it. Very short darts. <laughs> they really are, especially that front one. A little short darts. Yeah, that is really interesting how much she remade this gown. So it's polished cotton in the sleeves. Looks like a cotton twill for the... Um, base lining, everything else basically. Um, again on the selvage for the fashion fabric, this one just has the inner fabric turned under. Actually, I think she had to add more this way too. Oh yeah. Okay, so you can actually see here on this line here is where the buttons used to be. So she also had to take out the center front and the lining wasn't big enough so she had to seam um, another piece there. That's about an inch wide, so she needed an inch on that side. Does she have to do the same on this side? Doesn't look like she did the same on this side, um, which would make sense because buttonholes, you really can't do anything with that. So she had to, so yeah, that was, she grew, that's like, basically that's like three and a half inches all the way around that she had to expand, and she expanded it from the, you know, neckline here and the bust, but really it was mostly at the waist and these sides right here. So the underarm seams, of course, end right here. So it kind of affects her bust as well. It's interesting. It's very interesting. Untrimmed, except for, of course, the lovely little buttons. That's so precious. Now I had to go back and get the tape measure. Excuse me. Bye. So really, 
this extra fabric here, which I was seeing online and I wasn't sure what that was, it's because she had to cut the piping. And so she just folded a little bit of this excess fabric out to make it look like piping, even though it's not piped at all. And it's not even the same fabric, it's a ribbed silk. So these are some quick and dirty alterations. Let's measure the weight. There's a hook at the bottom, and if I put it at the end of that hook, it's 28 and a half inch waist. I don't see an eye there. Huh. There's a hook, but no eye. Interesting. Very bent hook as well. Let's see what her waist is. Or her bust. We already measured her waist. About a 39 inch bust. So, I think medium size. I think average. But that is her. Can you see that? That's her. Do another one. Let me do this one next. I think that was a skirt. But I think we'll say that was the last. Sheer last bodice. Just be very careful with originals and scissors. So it concerns me. Don't you miss that. Oh, it's in another container. you baby. She's had ruffles everywhere which I think is really cool. No, don't. Leave the original alone. So she's another one with a bound neckline. Piping at the arm side, piping at the waist line. Lots of threads everywhere which tells me there was a skirt attached. These are fun little sleeves. I'd like to do this sometime. Oh, well, they're just coat sleeves. They have um, box pleated ruffles that are machine stitched on, and it's just um, towards the end, all the way across here. Okay, she piped her um, inner seam, so the seam that goes here, or the outer seam, that's the outer seam. Um, she piped this one. She did not pipe the one that goes here on the coat sleeves. But there are more ruffles, again box pleated, on the um, top of the sleeve. No trim on the bodice, and I'm not seeing any evidence like stitch marks or that sort of thing. So I don't think there ever was anything there. She has two darts. Neither are boned, although there looks like it may have meant to be, it to be boned because there are what looks like bony channels. So maybe quite a large allowance. Perhaps one that was um, remade. There's like a seam inside the seam allowance. So it could be that she just added extra and looks in the front. Whatever she did, you can't tell it from the front. So yeah, no boning. It's another one that um, there's just a tiny little tuck taken for the center back um, or the three piece back. So it isn't a um, there aren't seams there, it's just a tuck. Go ahead. She closes up with hooks and eyes. Entirely hooks and eyes, so no, no buttons. Yep. 
let's go ahead and measure her. Twenty-four and a half inch waist. Let's just flip the last two down the middle. I love all the like sweat marks on the underarms. These dresses were definitely worn. At least the two black ones were. And a thirty-five and a quarter inch bust. Yeah, let's see. Polished cotton for the um, lining on the sleeve, but again, it looks like a cotton sateen um, for the lining on everything else. And yeah, a lovely little piece. Need to add more black silk to the collection. And the skirt. is green plaid. I'm actually really excited because like on the pictures, um, I have a good friend who has almost an identical silk to this. Yeah, hers is a little bit darker, but yeah, it is, it's almost identical. The, the plaid is identical. Okay, oops, little note from the seller. It's a very fine silk. There to close, she's a tiny little waist. Okay, closes up the center back, which is interesting. I wonder if it went to an evening gown. It's in giant nice pleats, really large nice pleats. Um, actually, it's probably a lytical dress because it has like very few pleats on the front, but then it's gauged in the back. There's the gauging in the back. And let me see. She's hand sewn and not very well. <laughs> Her stitches are bigger than mine. Like, look how massive those are. This was not put together with any skill. Although she matched the plaid really well. So fine. It's like a tissue taffeta. Waistband, about an inch, I would say. A little less, three quarters. Whipped. She didn't really turn under the skirt very much either. Like there's almost no pocket. There's almost no, like, when you would balance a skirt. It really doesn't exist here. And it's lined, so there's tiny little whip stitches all across the top. So this part was actually made with some amount of skill. The skirt panels themselves? Okay. I have seen some sloppy stitching in my life, but not that sloppy. But you know what? I wonder if it was remade because it's actually cut. Some of them are cut straight on straight, and others are cut. There's a like a at an angle, so that's why I was saying it's probably an elliptical shape. Um, because you see the plaid doesn't match here, but it matches in other places. And where the plaid does match, the straight seams. Those are all very sloppy, and where it is shaped, those have much smaller stitches. Much more careful. Look there, there's no closures on this side of the bodice. Looks like they may have been maybe where the hole was. Um, let's see, there was a pocket somewhere, I saw it. So her pocket would have been on her right side if this truly is the back, which would make sense because I've never seen a front gauge dress and a back pleated bodice. That would make no sense. So this has to be the back. And if so, the pocket is um, on her right side. It looks like she has plain cotton stitched with the back stitch by hand. Um, kind of an odd shape. Nothing inside of it. One day I'm telling you I'm going to find something cool. But you know what? <laughs> Whoever remade this stitched over the pocket. You can't have access to it. 
interesting. I wonder why anyone would do that. Because there is no access. They stitched right over it. So whoever made it originally wanted to have a pocket. And whoever remade it decided, I don't want a pocket. Camera died for a second, so um, I can't remember where we were at. Uh, we measured the waist down. Let me measure how far around it is to see what her waist measurement was. Um, just about, anyway. I, that pocket still cracks me up, though. <laughs> Apparently, someone was anti pockets. Tiny little ways. Okay, um, from end to end here, we're at 27 inches. Which isn't bad. And each plate is indeed loop, as you would normally see with. There's like three different kinds of red in here, so it tells me that she probably remade this dress a lot. None of them actually match, which is kind of fun. There's a dark green, okay. That's the same. Okay, let's look at the bottom here. Okay, there's some weight to the bottom. The top is very, very fine and light. Okay, so we have a facing. Ooh, it's interface too. Feels like there may be tarlatan in there. Very stiff. Can't see exactly what it is. And I'm looking around. I'm not seeing anything that's like where it's falling apart. And I can tell. But yeah, it's definitely interlined. <laughs> very, very finely. The strange little. Um, there's these random threads. Just every. A little bit. Interesting. Thinking it could have been like a skirt lifter, but I'm not seeing any up. They're pretty. That is interesting. Yeah, it is like it may even be interlined with two layers of um, tartlet takes. It's very stiff. Um, but the facing is polished cotton. I'm going to measure how high that is. And the um, tarlatan is the same height as the um, facing here. So it looks like we're at about seven and three quarters. It's a raw edge, so um, yeah, it wasn't like it was, um, you know, folded in or anything. It's just raw edge. It hasn't had any issues with raveling, which is your typical. That's what I usually do. Very small little um, stitches to attach the facing of a dark green thread. Looks like the same thread that was used with the gauging on top and to attach to the waistband. And um, more, what's it called? Hem tape. This is what it's called. Hem tape. And so she did a running stitch all the way across and then folded it under and did another running stitch. Her hem tape. Where did my thing go? Okay. It's thicker, or wider than my other skirt that I have. Okay. It's about 5 eighths inch, which I think the other one's just shy of um, half, half an inch. So yeah, 5 eighths inch wide. And it looks like she did fold over her raw edge. Um, the other one didn't, they didn't really care. It's really interesting to see how some people care about this sort of thing and other people are just like, no one's going to notice it anyway. Now when I was looking at it online, I could clearly see in some areas that there were little um, gussets almost put into parts of the skirt. Like here's one, that's a very narrow one. The skirt seems, the fabric seems to be very wide. Here's another seam and there's another little gusset right there, but this one doesn't have a gusset. This one's one of the straight seams. Is this the center back here? It is. Look at that. So on either side of the center back, there's a little tiny gusset. This one does not have a gusset. So it's just the center back that they put the little um, gussets in. The center front seam is also just straight. It's really interesting because like it looks like they use it like almost scraps to make this dress. 
Um, it probably was that they took one of the panels to gore it to make it more elliptical shaped because there'll be like a really long space without any seams and then there'll be two seams right, right next to each other. Which is interesting construction. It's like this one from here to here and these are both no, this one's um, on the straight. This one's kind of angled. Wait, that would be the wrong end. It would be helpful if I measured from one. 24 inches, which is probably about 25 inches wide of fabric uh, when you... It's also been done with the seam lots and everything. Hmm. Yeah, so it looks like there's one in the front that's on the um, straight and one on the back that's on the straight and everything else is kind of gored and cut and remade. So that is very interesting. But yeah, there's a few little holes in it, but otherwise she's not in terrible condition. There's a few stains, but it's really pretty fabric. But uh, that's essentially that, and um, that's our unboxing video, essentially. So three bodices and a skirt, that's not bad. I need to get an evening bodice next, I think. I think that's going to be the next goal. And then, and then potentially get a um, wool or cotton because well, all I have is silk now. So, And I'm okay with that because most most of what I do when I recreate dresses, is they're all silk. So um, that's kind of why I lean towards collecting silk. But who am I having a couple of wool or cotton dresses too? But I think evening glass is going to have to be next on the list. But thank you so much for joining me, and I will see you in the next video.